Good morning my dear students, my name is Nir Prayana. I am currently available at the Hamlet Tishan Center, Brahmotor, Kathmandu and the Kumudu Nikunjo Secondary School, Kalimati, Kathmandu. My dear students of grade 8, this is your science class and in your science class we have been discussing about the lesson Living Beings. After our previous class we discussed about, uh, we introduced what is microorganisms what is microbiology and what is bi bacteria yes and in today's class we are going to discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of bacteria first of all let us discuss what you know about bacteria we all have known bacteria as the germs for so long time isn't it okay so germs means bacteria are usually the agents that causes disease or ailments in us okay many diseases many diseases that ails the mankind and not just mankind the animal and plants alike are caused by bacteria so we can say the bacteria some bacteria I won't say all bacteria, but some bacteria are harmful to our health. Okay? These bacteria, when they are on the surface of our body, on the skin or outside it epithelial tissue, they are not harmful. They don't do any harm to us. Indeed, some of them are even beneficial to us. But when the same bacteria reaches to bloodstream then they release endotoxin molecules endotoxin molecules means the poisonous substances released by bacteria okay and these toxins they can have several effects on our body they, they might cause anaphylactic shock in which your blood pressure suddenly lowers very much and your um, blood vessels they dilate too much and you cannot breathe properly because of that and due to that shock you might even lose your life anaphylactic shock it is very dangerous thing and then after high fever obviously all of the endotoxins are known to cause high fever have you ever wondered why in most of the type of infection you get high fever especially if uh, they are caused by bacteria they cause high fever yes and the viral diseases also causes cause high fever viral diseases are also known to cause fever but the mechanism <coughs> is quite different we'll discuss that later on well um, endotoxin causes high fever and sometimes it can also cause death okay so um apart from endotoxin molecules there are some bacteria some specific bacteria that release proteolytic enzymes proteolytic means the enzymes which or the chemicals which digest protein which breaks down protein and proteins are present in our muscles they are rich in our muscles okay our muscles have lots of protein so if these bacteria are trapped inside your muscles and they start to release proteolytic enzymes then these enzymes will start to eat away your muscles from inside they cause decaying of your muscles from inside it is uh, quite uh, <laughs> chilly isn't it well that is very dangerous so here actually it is very dangerous okay so we are going to discuss some diseases caused by bacteria number one tuberculosis tuberculosis well tubercle basically means outgrowth okay and tuberculosis is the outgrowth which is formed inside our lungs that outgrowth is usually made up of bacterial growths okay and when such tubercles are formed inside our lungs then basically our lungs cannot breathe properly our lungs cannot get enough oxygen in it because of tubercles 
and because of tubercles maximum part of our lungs are already damaged look at this particular case the right lung is almost completely damaged and left lung is intact so you can say only fifth his lungs are getting only 50 percent oxygen okay so his overall body will also get less oxygen because of this and when you get less oxygen in your body then you cannot digest your food properly you cannot produce energy from your food okay and other metabolisms cannot occur efficiently so you will start to lose weight very drastically you'll start to lose your weight very drastically okay and you will lose your appetite as well you don't want to eat as much loss of appetite and you will uh, there will be con constant coughing continuous coughing okay and in your cough blood might appear that is the particular uh, symptom of this disease tuberculosis see the tuberculosis it is very dangerous disease okay and which bacteria causes this disease it is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis the name of bacteria is mycobacterium tuberculosis and major effects or symptom of this disease is tissues of lungs are destroyed so blood appears in cough and there is difficulty in breathing it is basically an infection of lungs but some variety of mycobacterium tuberculosis they can affect other parts of your body such as your muscles or bone or intestine or even other organs yes but the most common one is the infestation of lungs next is gangrene you might not have heard about this disease previously but look at this have you seen something like this well it is not just blackening of his skin it is not just blackening of his skin but his muscles are rotting away from inside it started from his uh, fingers his muscles are rotting away from inside once it happens you cannot move your fingers you cannot move this part or if you apply some little more of force they will just break off it sounds so dangerous scary isn't it and look at this in this case the same kind of infection is eating away his thumb and here in this case this is a severe case of this disease called gangrene in which the muscles they look like it they got burned yes the muscles they are being eaten away in mass yeah yucky who wants to get this disease no one wants to get this disease yes now name of this disease is gangrene it is caused by a bacteria called clostridium perfringens this bacteria they release enzyme that dissolve the muscle i talked about proteolytic enzyme before yes okay i was talking about this disease okay now the uh, how do you get this disease how do you get gangrene well it's very simple if you got wounds or cuts at some part of your body and uh, that wound is not cleaned properly or that wound is um, con gets contacted to soil or dust particle then the soil and dust particle they have uh, spores of clostridium perfringens so they are trapped inside your wound your wound will get healed yes eventually your wounds will get healed but the spores of clostridium perfringens they are trapped inside your wound or inside your muscles when these spores germinate they give rise to this bacteria as uh, they release proteolytic enzymes then the enzymes will start to degrade your muscles from inside dangerous yes and once you get this gangrene there is no option but to cut out your limbs or your hands and legs or the affected part because it will keep on spreading 
there is no medicine it will keep on spreading if you want to stop the spreading then you have to cut off the affected part that's the only treatment okay next disease is typhoid well basically uh, nowadays typhoid is not a common disease but in past typhoid is considered a very dangerous and very common fever in Nepali it is called Bisam Joro or Ekais Dine Joro Bisam Joro it is called Bisam Joro because the fever never goes away the fever never goes away <laughs> you your fever is continuous and Ekais Dine Joro it is called Ekais Dine Joro because once you get this disease your days are counted that means on the 21st day most of the victims they lose their life within 21 days most of the victim they lose their life within 21 days and nowadays there are specific medicine for typhoid okay even if you get typhoid nowadays by getting that medicine it is called chloramphenicol okay by getting by, by taking that medicine the disease will go away within one week it will take only one week and it is nowadays it is not hard that someone is dead because of typhoid okay and this disease typhoid it is caused by a bacteria called salmonella typhi salmonella typhi what they do when they get to your blood they release endotoxin they release endotoxin and that endotoxin causes very high fever and due to high temperature many of your organs or nerves might be destroyed it might cause organ failure okay or it might cause um, permanent disabling of some parts of your body or some of your sense organs some people recover from typhoid without treatment but if they recover then also some of them become deaf for a lifetime some of them become blind some of them become um, dumb for the lifetime some of them become partially paralyzed there are many effects observed in the persons who recovered from cholera with sorry who recovered from typhoid without any treatment so it is also one of the dangerous diseases caused by bacteria well next disease we are going to talk about is cholera cholera is, uh, is called haiza in our language it is called haiza yes es pali ko haiza phalana lai laiza okay now uh, cholera it is one of the um, s serious diseases once you get cholera if you are not treated then you might be dead within three days it doesn't take very long it might take it takes only three days to take your life if not treated okay and cholera is caused by vibrio cholerae vibrio cholerae when it gets to your intestine it releases a toxin and that toxin reverses absorption of water from intestine you see this is our intestine yes whenever we drink water or whenever we eat food food also contains water the water gets to large intestine ascending colon transverse colon and descending colon food uh, water gets into large intestine and from large intestine water is absorbed to the blood water is absorbed from intestine to the blood but when vibrio cholera releases its toxin that toxin reverses that effect that means water will now pass back from blood into intestine actually what should happen water must transfer or water must be absorbed from intestine to blood but when you get cholera what happens water is transferred from blood to intestine so the intestine becomes full of water and that needs to be excreted and that is excreted by the process of profuse diarrhea severe diarrhea okay and your blood it is losing water constantly when your blood loses water all your body parts also do not get water and when, when your brain doesn't get enough water then your brain might go to coma 
your brain becomes unconscious your skin they um, stiffen your muscles cannot function they also become tight okay and because of a uh, severe dehydration you will die within three days so treatment of cholera treatment of cholera is absolutely necessary when a person gets cholera okay so uh, water will be diffused from blood into intestine I hope there is no confusion up to you now next one is pneumonia pneumonia is the infection of lungs it is caused by streptococci pneumonia okay streptococcus pneumonia and when this bacteria gets to your lungs it causes accumulation of fluid in your in the alveoli of your or your lungs okay this is the lungs lungs contain alveoli millions of alveoli these alveoli are air pockets when you breathe in air is stored in that alveoli then it filters out oxygen the oxygen is transported to blood but when you get pneumonia because of the bacteria the alveoli they are filled up with liquid not air and when they are filled up with liquid you cannot take in air and you cannot take oxygen okay if it gets serious then it might cause death as well okay next one is syphilis syphilis is also called Spanish flu because its symptoms are similar to flu flu means common cold its symptoms are similar to flu but later on what happens the flu subsides on its own you don't need to take any medicine the flu subsides on its own but then you will become mad means the syphilis at first they infect your genitals it is sexually transmitted infection okay so it first affects genitals and without any treatment it goes away without any treatment it goes away but that by that time the bacteria treponema pallidum it transmits itself it migrates from genitals into bloodstream when it gets to bloodstream it causes fever and uh, flu like symptoms okay and then from bloodstream it might travel to your brain if it gets to your brain then it will cause mental illness and there is no treatment to it there is no treatment to syphilis once you get to third stage but until when you are in first stage or you are in second stage there is very simple treatment of syphilis just few doses of penicillin will get this disease gone okay okay these are only few diseases I have mentioned here but there are thousands of other diseases which are caused by bacteria now let us discuss other harmful effects of bacteria well bacteria causes diseases not only of humans but also of plants and animals and when plants are affected by bacteria or animals are affected by bacteria they cause loss of productivity and that has economic loss it is hard to the farmers the agricultural field and bacteria also causes rotting of vegetables and fruits it is because of bacteria that you cannot keep fruits and vegetables for a long time you cannot store them they rots away okay and some bacteria such as denitrifying bacteria which are found in soil they decrease fertility of soil because nitrate is essential component in soil which are needed by plants nitrate but these bacteria they break nitrate they break off nitrate and release nitrogen from it so they are also harmful bacteria okay we have discussed so much about harmful bacteria but all bacteria are not evil let's say only 0.1 percent of bacteria are evil rest of 99.9 .9 percent bacteria they are useful let us not judge all bacteria because of few bacteria few germs okay now let us discuss the importance of bacteria first of all they are commensals commensals means beneficial microorganisms many bacteria they harbor in our intestine they live in our intestine and in intestine they synthesize several vitamins and other enzymes which are essential for our health they make vitamins and enzymes which we cannot get from food 
okay that's why they are very important not just that we cannot digest everything in our food we cannot digest everything that is in our food and such non-digestible substances in food are also fermented by this bacteria and they help to extract energy or nutrient from these non-digestible things like we cannot digest grass but herbivores they can digest grass but they do not have any enzyme to digest cellulose it is the bacteria found in their intestine that digest cellulose the bacteria found in their intestine digest cellulose in our body also many bacteria they help to digest proteins in our intestine okay w the protein we take in food our body cannot digest them all and they are digested by bacteria when bacteria digest proteins they produce a gas called ammonia and because of which farting occurs okay so farting is not actually bad okay anyway our next uh, the next advantage the bacteria provides in our intestine is if germs enter in our intestine these bacteria they don't allow the germs to establish okay they don't allow the germs to establish in our intestine and they defend us against these germs okay that's why doctors also suggest you to eat cord in case of stomach distension if you have any problem of stomach doctors suggest you to eat cord because cord contains beneficial bacteria the bacteria which are beneficial to our health they are present in the cord okay okay next importance is soil fertilization okay soil becomes fertile only because of bacteria okay in absence of bacteria nutrients cannot be resupplied in the soil that means when dead and decaying materials dead materials and excreted materials are uh, deposited in soil they are decomposed by bacteria and by decomposing them they release the nutrients into soil because of the nutrients soil becomes fertile okay so without bacteria the soil will not be fertile in fact if we remove all the bacteria from soil then it will be nothing more than sand okay if we remove all the bacteria from soil then it will just be like sand sand does not support the growth of bacteria that's why sand is not fertile okay and next one is food synthesis well many food items are synthesized by bacteria some of the foods you love like curd i love curd cheese there are different varieties of cheese yes and then pickles you like pickles isn't it gundruk the favorite food of nepalese many of these foods they are prepared by bacteria and you know mahi mahi yes mahi is, is actually fermented milk mahi is fermented milk and uh, also you know that sour you know sour milk sour milk the milk which is little bit sour you can get it from dairy shops okay it is one of the dairy product it is also prepared by bacteria okay and the lastly symbiosis right on this is the root of leguminous plant leguminous plants kosebali okay the roots of leguminous plants you can see there are nodules yes these nodules have a bacteria called rhizobium this rhizobium they turn atmospheric nitrogen into nitrate and i have already told you nitrate is essential for plants without nitrate plants cannot grow without nitrate plants cannot grow so this bacteria the rhizobium they convert nitrogen into nitrate and mix in soil okay and that nitrate becomes available to the plant and in return plants provide them food which are prepared in the, in the process of photosynthesis okay 
that's why these plants they cannot survive without the association of rhizobium see and overall and overall bacteria are very important for living beings bacteria themselves are living beings but they are very important for other forms of living beings as well okay okay that's all for today in our next class we will discuss about virus until then thank you class